microphone test one two um give me a thumbs up if you can hear us like clearly is this the microphone we normally use i don't uh i don't think so i think I guess it has to be this one because that's the only one we're getting green with. We'll just project and scream. Yeah, we can. Oh, wait, I need to go ahead and screen share. All right. So, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be our meeting on Hollow Night, as I'm sure you've all read about. Um, little Zoom things covering up the Mantis Lord. Um, so, yeah, uh, without further ado, we'll get into it. The, the intention here is, uh, well, I guess actually first announcements. Final project presentations next week, as you've probably already heard. So, um, sorry, sorry, not next week. We are celebrating Thanksgiving next week, week after. Um, the week we will be here. Uh, so make sure that you have everything together for that. You know, um, just some slides, same as the other project presentations. If you have something playable, that's super, super cool. Feel free to post a link. If you don't, we totally understand. Um, we just kind of want to see, you know, where people's projects are. Um, and that's it as far as announcements go. That'll be our last meeting for the semester. We will also be having elections. No. No, we only do elections in the spring and no one's graduating. We're a dictatorship now. Okay. <laughs> no elections and no word on the amendment. That's your job. It has to get approved by the advisor. 
that's okay. Um, <laughs> no word on the amendment. Then. Okay, we will not be having any voting next semester. Uh, as Logan said, we're temporarily a dictatorship. Feel free to vote us out in the spring if you so desire. Yeah. Um, anyway, so the format for this meeting is going to be a kind of a guided discussion. We have some questions uh, that we've prepared beforehand. Um, I also have just like a little bit of just some kind of like fun facts, interesting thing about Hollow Knight that I did not know going in about the development behind it. If you have anything for, we're going to go into like uh, gameplay, art, design, and sound. And at any of these sections, if you have something relevant, like feel free to raise your hand, cut me off, whatever, um, to talk about it. But uh, yeah. So first off, uh, Team Cherry actually started as a jam team for Ludum Dare. They made a game called Hungry Night, um, I think in Flash. Uh, and you can see some similarities between Hungry Night and Hollow Knight, of course, later. Um, but they actually had virtually no, uh, they had no, between them, no game industry experience and virtually no, like, game development experience, aside from a couple of game jams before that. Um, yeah. Yeah, and as uh, Elwood said, the main character, the design was exactly the same. Uh, the Game Jam game actually was like it did not do well in the jam uh, i think it had one star on newgrounds it was not by any metric a good game but a lot of people liked the character designs they really liked the art style so they went back to it later uh, when they actually started building hollow knight they had the knight movement completely working before they even began any other part of the development um, just kind of in an empty room with platforms and stuff testing that out getting that to feel right and then they started building everything else around that um, uh most of the art was actually initially done in a sketchbook and then scanned in and then filled in in photoshop and animated um and uh until they actually did their kickstarter where they got a little over a hundred thousand like australian dollars i don't know what that is in us dollars they didn't even have an office they were all working from home they wrote the entire script in google sheets and all the voices in the game uh, they didn't actually hire any voice actors. It was the dev team, people they found that they happened to be sharing an office with, uh, and of course, friends and family of the dev team that they could convince to actually help them record voices. Uh, so I meant to have that come in line by line. But uh, so the gameplay of Hollow Knight obviously works on some level. Um, I assume, by the way, I guess quick show of hands, who played all of Hollow Knight? Who played? Yeah, I didn't play all of Hollow Knight. Full discretion. <laughs> that game's hard. I did not finish it. Um, oh, sweet. One more. That's actually way more than I thought. So props That's to everyone right. for finishing Hollow Knight because it's hard. Did anyone 106% finish Hollow Knight? Like Hollow Knight in the DLC? Seriously? That's amazing. Wow. Dude, we're in the midst of like gods. Yeah. This is astounding. I didn't realize that people actually beat that. That's I didn't know people were supposed to be able to yeah, beat that. I thought that. the Pantheon was meant to not be in it. Oh, um, I'm sorry. By the way, the reason we don't have the camera turned around, uh, we had one person do everything but the Pantheon and then three people except for the Pantheon because the Pantheon is insane. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, who played some of Hollow Knight or like bought Hollow Knight and got it started? Yeah, um, I'm in the same boat. It's hard. It's long. I got lost a lot. Um, so let's kind of break this game down piece by piece uh, and see what about it really like connected with us. What did we enjoy? What about how the character moves and the movement abilities like stuck out to you or was just fun and enjoyable? This is my first ever Metroidvania, so it was my first time for going around the map, seeing that this one popped up a weird copy, like you can stand out of the shape, and then later it turned out that, and then later you get an ability that lets you go through like cracking ground, like the death of the rest of the You think back, oh, it's just that one area, and then I branch off the, the map more and find more out to the It's full on circle of the Yeah, I think they do a really good job of like, not overwhelming you with that like you see something that you weren't initially thinking about and then as soon as you have the power they kind of put you in one or two areas where you can actually use it so it helps connect it's like oh 
I should be looking out for these in the future. And there's probably some areas that I previously went to where I can now use this movement ability. Um, does anyone have, we have in here nail hopping, which I actually really agree with. Coming from Shovel Knight where you just held down, I thought that was like a little hard in Shovel Knight or in like Zelda too. Uh, nail hopping was just a completely other level because you know you had to like use your brain for a second um, and I'm sure we all died at least once or twice like on those creatures in the water um, and whatever that green zone is where you have to nail hop on them to get across um, just little things like that where in some other games maybe you're just riding on a platform but you know they want to make it a little bit harder for you and really give you practice with that for like boss fights and stuff later when you're going to need it mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the things about nail hopping is it's it's pretty impressive that with how hard it is, I, at least I never felt like it was unfair when I like messed up. I know I was always like, oh, I screwed up. I could have done better there. And I think that's a pretty consistent thing with the movement, like the platforming in Hollow Knight is very forgiving, um, but still difficult. And I, I think I, I saw like a, a video where they were talking about how because the game is really heavily focused on combat and the platforming is kind of, kind of secondary, um, there's a whole lot of like frames of basically like leniency. So like if you're, like there are the common things that kind of all platformers do where like if you're a frame or two off the platform, you're still kind of on the platform if you're jumping. Um, but they kind of just take that to another level, jump it like they, have way more frames of leniency in landing on things and jumping off of things. Um, a little bit of like frames where you can like hit a spike or something before actually dying. Um, I think that works very well. Um, I don't know about many other games that do it like this, but most games you have all of the options this, something like Hollow Knight affords with movement, dash, crystal, um, you have dash master to go down, you have to die, you have stuff that you can stall with, like um, spells, and basically everything works to get, like most other games you have to choose what you're using, and then it's locked out until you like land on the platform and reset, but Hollow Knight you can just kind of chain everything together for platforming combat. It's just very well designed in that sense that once you figure it out, you kind of get on another level compared to anything else you might have. I think uh, like on that note, something that they do really well with that is when they give you a new ability, um, they usually give you a lot of like, opportunities to use it um, in relatively low stake situations where you're not gonna um, like die a lot. Like when they first kind of introduced nail hopping, you're pretty close to a bench when you need to actually like nail hop across a gap um, or stuff like that. Like despite all of the abilities requiring a certain level of skill to use, they kind of force you to get good with them as fairly as they can, you know, you even if it's a little frustrating or there's a learning curve by the time you're, you know, two hours past that, it's like second nature to use like a new ability that you've gotten. Like the, the dash would be, you know, the first one. Um, or I, I like you mentioned dash master because I had that equipped the entire time I was playing because it's just more fun to have better dash. Um, yeah, if anyone has anything else to say about the movement, So I think something else that they do that's really interesting, um, I don't know any other Metroidvanias aside from maybe Guacamele um, that do this, like the true classic Metroidvania progression that you see in Hollow Knight with a pretty much completely melee based system. Um, and I actually, in a video, I saw the developers talk a lot about how difficult that was because there was so little for them to pull from. Um, I don't know. I just think that that's something that the game does really, really well in terms of, I think it's part of the difficulty compared to something like an actual Metroid title or Castlevania where you can always stay kind of at an arm's length from the enemy that Hollow Knight really just forces you 
to be right up against them because Nail has a relatively short length uh, in comparison. Um, I guess that's not really a question, but if anyone has anything to add on to that. Uh, I think the bigger one and one that I struggled with a lot was the map system. Uh, I got lost all the time, like very, very frequently. Like it had me second guessing how I get home at night. Um, why do you think that they chose to make the map system relatively bare bones compared to modern games where usually the map system at the least shows where you are on the map? It makes it feel a lot more like you're exploring something that nobody's really seen before. You're seeing new things and like, or like exploring old neighborhoods. I feel like a cartographer as you compare to a bug that just gives you a piece of paper to make the actual map. Yeah, I, I agree a lot. I think the as frustrating as it can be to get lost when you're like trying to do something specific. I feel like the the system overall is is really rewarding when you're just wandering around looking for stuff because it you really do feel both like the sense of discovery but also you feel like way more accomplished I think once you get used to the map system and you can just pull it up and instantly know where you are and how to navigate it um, as opposed to just like a waypoint system. You also form your own memories and like experiences at different parts of the map and build your own mental map preference of trying to get to the tower and stuff and so that it is your own knowledge not just looking at a safe knowledge but the map they put up. I kind of encourage that with the tokens that you can buy they don't link except putting them on the map for symbolic reasons. It's just kind of hey I remember um that's when I defeated the hardest boss in the game for me which yeah, no, I fun. I wanted to ask, did anyone use the tokens like a lot? I didn't obviously finish the game, but I didn't find myself using them that much. Like I would usually just have one color of them on the map um, and like pretty sparingly, just it's like if I knew there was something I needed to go back to a little bit later, I'd put it on the map. But I was never really using more than maybe two markers on the map at a time. Um, did any of you guys find yourself using the markers like a lot or the badge that shows where you are on the map? I didn't want to use that because I wanted um, Dash Master perpetually equipped. Um, but did any of you guys find yourself using some of the options that they give you to um, like augment the map system? Or were you mostly just glancing at the map and then looking at your surroundings and trying to build a mental map? Yeah, I wouldn't really use it for when there is a roadblock because you can tell that Oh, the reason I probably didn't go to the room over is he that the room next to another room is grayed out. And so, oh, the reason I didn't go there is probably because I didn't have the ability. So, when I get an ability, I can go back there and check. So, the reason I did not. So, I wanted to add to the uh, conversation about how the map system kind of sucking helps you when you need to start to know the world better and make better it is because for whatever reason during the summer, I decided to try to get like a speed run the game under three hours even though the world record's like 20 minutes or something crazy like that but and like not having to go buy a map for every single region and sort of knowing the things already uh may i ask what your time was when you were speed running it i got like two hours and 15 minutes after three tries that is insane but i followed the guide i, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to point out what Elwood said. It was basically what you said, where um, like being lost uh, was kind of enjoyable, like in sort of a weird way. It was memorable, at least, yeah. you know? Um, Elwood said enjoyable, but you said memorable. I would say more memorable. I found myself kind of frustrated being lost. I've been coddled too much by modern games. I feel like there were times when being lost was frustrating, and there were times when being lost was enjoyable, but it was always at least interesting. Like I, I found that like if I was looking to do a very specific thing, like if I was like, I'm gonna go here to fight this boss right now and I got lost, then I got annoyed. But if I was just like wandering around and suddenly realized like, oh, I have no idea where I am or where I'm going, that was usually I think enjoyable to me. 
I think um, as well, I think the like it all kind of falls back on the movement for me. Like it felt fun to traverse around two areas, even if you've already explored them, because it's like if you knew the exit, then it's like you were just dashing and, and like nail hopping your way through it and whatever other abilities you probably later get. Mm-hmm. Um, because you knew the area, you know, you were just like trying to get through it as fast as possible. Um, and because they give you enough tools to do that kind of quickly, um, it didn't really like a little bit of backtracking wasn't super frustrating. I think a lot of Metroidvanias do that well, but Hollow Knight certainly no exception. Yeah. And I think one of the, the big ones is, uh, I don't know if you got that far, but halfway through the game, that like central hub area, the Forgotten Crossroads, just completely changes and you have to relearn it again. Um, and I think like the timing on that, I don't think could be improved. Because like literally right as I was like, okay, I'm annoyed that I have to go through the Forgotten Crossroads again, it changed. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. I guess I'm not annoyed anymore. I was annoyed because I kept dying. But that's annoying. Yeah. Um, I think we put difficulty under design. The difficulty, yeah. if, if, we're, if anyone has anything else about like these systems of, you know, like how Hollow Knight feels to play, you can go ahead and throw that out, but we'll be moving to design next, which will be, uh, you know, things like difficulty, area crafting. Yeah, okay, we're gonna hop to that. So how, I, I guess difficulty definitely falls under this. I guess the difficulty is kind of shaped primarily by the levels and enemies. But uh, how do these how do these work together? And first off, what was everyone's favorite boss or even just like regular enemy that they did fight? Or maybe I should say least favorite boss since it's that kind of game. <laughs> or maybe both. Yeah, I guess both. I agree. I had a really hard like I think Mantis Lords was by far the most memorable boss fight for me because. Every time on that trek back, I was thinking why I lost to the Mantis Lords last time. And then I'd lose again. And eventually you beat them, but it's like because they have that little bit of a cooldown when you're walking to it, um, compared to some of the other bosses where it's a little shorter, it really kind of gives you time to uh, get mad at the Mantis Lords and then do it all over again. Yeah, they definitely didn't make a mistake putting the closest bench like two minutes away. No, I think all the, for most of the bosses, that felt super, super deliberate, um, which I think is interesting because I, it turned me off from the game initially, but like looking back, I really enjoyed those moments. And I can understand why that alienates some of the audience while also bringing new people in who are like masochists a little bit. Um, We have Nightmare King Grimm here as an absolute favorite. Um, I did not fight Nightmare King Grimm. I can't talk much about Nightmare King Grim because he just murders me in three seconds every time. But regular Grim is awesome. That is a, a controversial choice. <laughs> it's just because like once I discovered that you know like your basic projectile like fireball or whatever, that if you can hit them while they're rolling away from you, it hits them like three times in a row. And that just kills you so quickly. And like I get such a good I had seen um, another thing the developers talked about was when their playtesters would find like little exploits, they were very deliberate to keep them in and I would imagine that like they probably knew that you could beat that boss by timing the fireball with the roll um which is a really interesting because that does make a boss fight that a lot of people consider very frustrating a lot easier also, it's it has been a little bit since I fought them, but is is that the fight where you can like there's like a little secret area that you can like kill well, one of them before you even fight the boss? And you make them fight you mm-hmm. that's just how it's like secret 
Mm -hmm. I also feel like that was a an interesting way for them to, I feel like when they were designing that boss, they were probably like, this boss is really hard and people are gonna be mad at it. And so they were like, instead of just like Watch making the boss itself it, yeah. easier um, or like adding, instead of just like dumbing down the boss and making it easier for people who don't need the help, they just added in a pretty easy to find secret that makes it easier for you and i think it's a cool way to handle like difficulty scaling um in a way that isn't a slider in a menu yeah which is cool i definitely thought um and i do kind of want to hop right into i don't know if it's the next one like the difficulty i think is really interesting um in that regard like i would consider that I think that the Souls-like game aspect, you can interpret that in a few ways, but like that hard but fair difficulty. Um, I don't know. I want. Does anyone have any other thoughts? Does anyone else have a really hard time with this game, or am I just bad? The first time around, I did, and I was like, "God, it is insane." Yeah, I agree. I feel like it's. I feel like the early game is, is harder than the late game because it really is a game that your skill is what determines the difficulty, not really the enemies that they're throwing at you. One big bug that you get later on though is that they they maybe a I think I should have noticed that is from like having a longer nail and mm -hmm. also upgrade the damage. And both of those things that are like later are huge issues. And if you're that the game becomes a lot easier. Like doing the nail hop, mm -hmm. have a larger nail, larger windows, so much simplifies a lot of combat stuff. Yeah, you know, like game like you can go anywhere without long nail. <laughs> I think it's interesting how rather than like primarily, they don't really give you just straight bigger number upgrades. They give you things like longer nail or better abilities, and as a result, it makes like. Like, if you could go back to some of the early boss fights with late game upgrades, they'd be a cakewalk. Um, but it's not just because you do more damage. I mean, it's a little bit because you do more damage, but that's a really small part of how they make you feel more powerful. Um, yeah. I, th I do think there is something to say that they might, even with the relatively limited just up the number of upgrades they give you. I think there might even be room for criticism that they do too much of that. Um, especially the last nail upgrade, I feel like is a, is a huge difficulty drop that I'm not sure if it works super well. But then again, I'm not sure if some of the like end game bosses would be like reasonable for the average person who didn't have it. I guess God knows what the directions were that box at that. So yeah, it's a base game two to three. Oh, the upgrades are great. Go tell you what. I think it's interesting that they made a game where people were like, "This game is really hard. Can you please make it a little harder?" Like Souls games do. It seemed to me like obviously Souls games were a huge inspiration. But they weren't really necessarily trying to make a Souls-like, and it just kind of happened. Um, I'm curious to see, like, I think in how they, the two things that strike, like, jump out to me are, like, the hard but fair difficulty and how they choose to deliver the lore. Everything about that seems very, um, it's, it's a huge similarity between, um, like, those kinds of games. I'm curious to see what you guys think about those mechanics in general, um, whether you like to see them, whether you're kind of turned off by them. I do that. I started to get really annoyed with it, but that was like my first game I played that had that whole system. So that did a did I fall in order Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order? Have that that same thing? Or? I've never played that. Uh, we only did. play old indie games here. Sorry. It was, <laughs> it was another Metroidvania, but it was like a weird one, and you go to so instead of having all those different sections. Oh, the map one, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I agree. 
Oh, um, now what his question was, did it have the same sort of death system as um, Hollow Knight, where you have to go back and get your currency? He said no. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that was already answered. Okay, two people have confirmed it. But yeah, it's, um, or I didn't like that too much at first, that it, even toward the end, I was kind of like, I because I, I remember there's also like a gag in the middle of the game somewhere there's a chair that gets give money to as like a bank. But then uh, you find out that she just stole your money or whatever. Yeah. And then you get your money back after that. But uh, that was, that was, I got really excited and I was all about it. And it worked really well though because you got really excited, like, oh, it saves some of my money and not get screwed over if I lose it. And then you get screwed over. Again. Yeah, the game tells you to get good. Yeah, exactly. It actually took me forever for her to rob me because I never maxed it out. <laughs> so I kind of cheated that. But we were, we were good little at that. Um, you can find her. Elsewhere in the game, and you'll see it tears, and you can knock, like, knock money out of her, and she gives you one point five the amount of times that was in the bank when she ran away. So, yeah, so it's not a complete F you, you'll just get more money out of her. I think stuff like that is a huge part of what makes the game so memorable to so many people. Um, like that very much strikes me as like someone on Team Cherry was like, wouldn't this be hilarious? And they were right. Um, and they actually have the balls to do it. Yeah, and I mean, it really gives the game like a ton of character. Like I couldn't, I couldn't see like Assassin's Creed or something doing something like that. Yeah. I think one thing in relation to it being a Souls like, which is, I actually don't know why this is but the you were talking about the like the delivery method for the lore i find that i generally really hate it. the the dark souls method of storytelling but i really like it in hollow Knight. and i don't know why that is i don't know if it's just because i like every other part of the game so that makes me like the storytelling um i'm actually i'm basically like asking you guys if you can if you are there like things that you think are different about the way Hollow Knight tells its story that make the Dark Souls method work better? Or am I just biased because I like Hollow Knight? I mean, when I was playing through it, I didn't really read very many of the journal entries. I don't really do that in games in general, mm -hmm. but I did read all of the dialogue because like, I'm not just gonna mash A when I'm talking to someone. Um, and I thought that you could pick up on like a lot of what was happening mm -hmm. with just that. Whereas in something like Dark Souls, I feel like you really have to read these journals and stuff like that, that I find yeah. myself not wanting to do. I think it, it might be that uh, I think a lot of the like really important, like obviously if you want the details, you have to read. Um, but I think a lot of like the big important plot points happen either environmentally in the background or in like the couple cutscenes that happen. So maybe that's it. It's like the, the big deal stuff is just kind of directly thrown at you and then the details you have to fill in instead of just having to read everything. But yeah, it's, it's one thing that I've, it has, ever since I've played it has confused me about Hollow Knight because like I shouldn't like the way they tell their story, but I really do. Yeah, I don't, the problem is that as one that I also looked at the wild, it's like it's post all the action. The kingdoms already fallen. There are already like so many battles that you might hear about in flavor text, but you don't get to participate. And you sort of have to explore this or that post everything happened in the world. So if you can see this build up relatively uneventful to where you could imagine the kingdom was like a dead city. So I don't know, that was sort of a weird thing to do. Um, could any of you guys? see telling a story in your own games in this way where you're kind of just leaving hints and breadcrumbs and putting a lot of the information in like optional reading material and stuff like that or would you prefer to deliver your met like your story and other methods to you know things like cutscenes, um required dialogue to progress I also think it takes a lot of, I don't know, I guess like, I feel like it's a little hard to put work into something that you know a lot of people are never going to see. 
and do that willingly. I, like, I feel like there's a temptation to, if you're putting work into something, be like, I want to make this so people are going to see it instead of like just shoving it down into some corner and like maybe 2% of the players are going to see it or something. Um, I think, I think it's impressive that they did it so much in this game. I think it works really well. I think that source code is cute. Yeah. That's all I thought. Um, it's not Hollow Knight specifically that makes me think of that style of storytelling. Um, when you were talking about the journal entries and everything, I instantly went to Bioshock, where I was that guy who finds every tape that exists in the world. Um, they only did it once or twice, but when they mixed the gameplay with being forced to find said tapes to progress, like where they had the um, apartment number in the paparazzi's journal, that if you didn't know what to do, you're kind of just stuck on the level until you explore and find stuff, which isn't very Bioshock-esque, but that specific aspect, I kind of wish they had done more. And I saw that in Hollow Knight, and I quite liked it. I think that's another good example of that kind of storytelling. But I think Bioshock is a little more heavy-handed with it than something like Hollow Knight or Dark Souls. Yeah, um, Bioshock, you actually have to go look for it. Yeah, well, I mean, in terms of all the essential knowledge, you don't have to read anything about. But I mean, there's just, aside from what you just said for a story mission, but that's like, you know, twice. Um, like the majority of what they show you is through cutscenes. But if you want to read more, I mean, there's just pages and pages and hours of audio that you can listen to. And they do actually fill in these like gaps in the plot. So I was going to say, I think that that kind of storytelling is cool and works really well in like uh, when you're trying to build a world. So we have a very specific world you built for the game. So like the Hollow Knight, they have some like smaller narrative that exists for your character. But when you want to learn more about the world the character lives in, outside of just your experience, is where that like side storytelling stuff goes on and where it works. Because you want to know, for your personal character, you want to know directly what he's experiencing. But when it's other background stuff, you can kind of put it to the side and dig it up if you want to find it you know. But it's not mandatory because it's not your character story, it's the world story. I also think if all and I kind of like forced all that information on you, I don't think its core audience would have resonated with the game as well. Um, or, you know, like a large group of the audience that really was like drawn to I think things like the, the difficulty the excruciating at times difficulty um no I guess just souls like uh like I think that kind of crowd um maybe wouldn't want to sit through a bunch of like mashing text while someone was explaining key bits of information but by putting it there for you to examine um you can kind of like keep the energy going uh we also had uh, I would say that um, in, in regard to like making your own game with that kind of design system, it, you know, less is more uh, by leaving. I mean, Hollow Knight's brilliant at that. You know, they, they just kind of leave these seeds. And then in a lot of cases, they do later build on them. But sometimes they don't even have to. Like something's going on in the background or you see some broken statue and your mind's just already uh, trying to like make assumptions about what could be there or if it's actually going to be relevant later or if it's just decoration times when they don't end the story, the headcanon is better than what they could ever come up with. And everybody's version of the game suddenly becomes different and personalized. So I think, unless anyone has anything else in general, any other questions uh, or anything like that about the design, I think we'll move into, I think, sound. I'm not sure what's next. It is. We're, this has been good. We're slower than expected. So. <laughs> Thought we were going to run out of questions in 10 minutes. I did. Um, so what was everyone's favorite character design? Like what characters did you like either and, you know, how they were presented or even just how they looked? Um, I think Hollow Knight has this instantly recognizable art style. Um, and just a lot of, I freaking loved um, Zote, little angry dude, like amazing. Like, I don't know, something you see him like, at the portion of the game I played, I maybe saw him like five times, and he was just a delight every single time. 
Um, is there anyone who else has like, I mean, what's your favorite character? Yeah, February of what year? <laughs> this is uh, uh, spoilers yeah, are yeah. encouraged. Radiance, which is like the final final boss, is like you might know that like a refined or something, but you're fighting a tall dragon. Yeah. And then I think the rays is like the very like orange. Yeah. The effect which is the color of all the orange says it's gonna. And I think that that whole thing for the when you beat the whole eye for the first time, you get like a bad ending, and it's really cool when you feel like yes, I finally beat him, and it's like wait, what did I do wrong? And you find out you gotta do that really hard final boss fight again. Oh, and that wasn't even that hard because now you have to do that two boss fights that are both really hard back to back. It's dark. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he's even missing an arm, like which is a detail that people are, like don't notice. He's swinging his like big, big sword with like one hand, and like shells cracked, like an infection, like torture. Really, I don't something about that is very creepy and punch. The other shape. Oh, that was like such a cool boss. And such a cool lead up, like. I just think it's crazy how many unique like character design like pretty much all of the bosses uh, are just super visually distinct um, and I can't think of oh well, there's a handful of indies that do that well but like something I saw um, about when they were designing it is they were very reluctant to ever throw a design away they would scribble a character design down in a sketch and it's like, okay, if it's not a boss, if it's not an enemy, we're going to throw it as an NPC somewhere. Um, I think that kind of worked in their favor. Um, like everyone has a different favorite character design or like it, it, maybe some of the bosses were not your favorite to fight, but like they were really cool visually. Um, I think the areas are another thing that, I mean, given that it is an exploration driven game um they just look stunning i mean uh hollow knight was all made in unity um if there's i i don't know where i've seen it but like they were basically just layering images like five or six different levels of image plane and then blurring all the images that you're not near and that's it and that's that is how you do the hollow knight art style any of us can do that um but <laughs> It just works so well. Um, Christian, who's not here, talked about how the limited color palette, like every area has like three colors, pretty much, maybe four, that they really stick with. And that's a big part of what gives them their identity. Um, and Hollow Knight's not the first game to do that. Uh, I think Super Metroid is the, like the oldest Metroidvania I can think of that really, really did that, where every area um, has like one or two colors that are associated with it. I think it really helps build that mental map. I'm curious what areas people liked either visually or actually exploring them, like which areas they thought were the most fun or the most memorable. 
the most memorable type score was a test because I hated it. There were so many little like pitfalls in the interviews and little skeletons that would get up and come to me randomly. All the like sounds, like you would just hear stuff scuttling somewhere. I could not imagine playing that with Jack Nickelodeon. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that whole section was just like, here we have this cute, nice little 2D blob style. Let's make it a horror game. <laughs> and then make it impossible to escape until you've gotten like impossible shit. Even on multiple platelets, I still get stuck in there. <laughs> I think even the early game areas that I played through, um, the like gimmicks is a bad word because I don't really think Hollow Knight has gimmicks, but like, um, okay, I guess gimmicks, the gimmicks of each area, like just the, the fungus and the fungal area, um, or yeah, I see City of Tears. City of Tears is freaking beautiful. Um, that was the first area where I was like, how did a team of like three people make a game like this? Um, I don't know. I just think they do a really good job of marrying like the unique visual feel with like one or two unique gameplay elements per area that they just kind of push to their limit. You don't really see a lot of overlapping either of that. You know, you're not going to see um, like the, the fungus that you bounce off of in the Fog Canyon or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Freaking hated the Fog Canyon because of those stupid jellyfish. I'm really bad at this game. Um, does anyone have any other thoughts on like art, color palette? um why it works so well this doesn't work especially much but i remember reading that the version is made by Ari gibson which is the developer who wrote the rest of um second one inspiration from this one that they used called the new tag and it was the end of the new film and you see it comes as that's about like a room of all the cracks from the bottom but like the deep blues and blacks that yeah, I see this really good point. Um, a lot of the area's color palette is relatively muted, and the enemies are usually not, especially those orange like growths. Um, and, and the orange color of a lot of the attacks, those are super, like your eyes dart to them immediately. And I think it's part of what makes it, you don't really feel snuck up on unless they want you to feel like you've been snuck up on. Um, it works really well. Um, even just like sometimes I had issues telling the background apart from the character, which is actually an issue I had with Cuphead too, um, where you sometimes some of the projectiles blended in with the background. But I don't think that's necessarily the game's fault. Um, like usually, I don't know. Like, I'm not really sure where I'm going with that. I'm bad at Hollow Knight. That's where I'm going with that. I don't know. They do a pretty good job of just like making everything feel co like like it's a double edged sword in the terms of how ev because everything feels so cohesive, you also kind of run the risk of uh, things blurring together. Um, so I don't actually think we have any of our musician members here, but the music is awesome and the sound design is awesome. So, um, we should definitely talk about that at least a little bit. Uh, does anyone have, I mean, you guys, like half of you are hardcore Hollow Knight fans. So do you have any favorite music tracks? Or, you know, just say like an area or boss that the music's playing. I don't know the names of the music tracks. My personal favorite song is The White Palace. Um, it's a, like it's both just like on its own, it's a really good and very pretty song, but also the, the contrast between the music and what is happening in The White Palace is weird and it's cool. Cause like, I don't know, yeah, you, you definitely didn't make it cause that's towards the end of the game. It's like this really gentle, soft, like, mostly piano and like strings piece um 
and it's like the most intense platforming section of the entire game. There's like giant buzz saws going around <laughs> everywhere. Um, and you're like inside the brain, I guess, of like the Pale King, I think, more or less. Um, I think that was it, but it, it's like. I was asked with his palace to whatever dimension you access through the dream state and the dream mail. And you just use the guard's mind to get there. It's kind of like the key, I suppose. Okay. It's confusing. But I don't know. I, the music is really good, and I feel like it it fits the environment, but also feels completely out of place at the same time. And it, it's weird and it's hard to explain, but I, it, I think it's very cool. Also with the White Palace, I love that they took the attention to detail where like you may or may not notice it, but in one specific room of the White Palace, which is supposed to be the nursery, when you walk in there, it's the same music as when you find your shade after you die, which gives an implied hint as to the little bit of court. Yeah. A bit of fun there. Especially thinking that you're dead when you're in your soul. Um, I also think that the this is kind of on the second one, how the music complements boss fights. The Mantis Lords and I was gonna say that one Grim songs. Yes, and, and Ezra disagreed with me when I was telling the like telling him about this, but I think especially for those two, Mantis Lords and, and the Grim Troop, I felt like the the music kind of like affects how you play. Especially the Grim Troop, I feel like that fight almost turns into like a weird yes. dance with Grim, and like everything's kind of like happening on beat with the music, um, and playing on beat with the music literally makes the fight easier. It's the way the music, especially in the in the Grim fight, affects and complements the gameplay is really impressive. You said you were fighting Mantis Lords on beat, which is what I disagreed with. I, well, I did also was, do that. That was so sociopathic. I feel like it's okay. true of, Ma of Mantis Lords as well. Okay. I think it's more true for Grim, but I think yeah, it's also true for Mantis Lords. Mantis Lords, I don't know. It's interesting. I thought it was true for Mantis Lords. Maybe I was just jamming too much to the song. The Mantis Lords, I wanted to bring up Mantis Lords just because the Mantis Lords music complements the boss fight perfectly. Um, I didn't fight Mantis Lords to the rhythm, but I just thought the music, but it was, I, it's a big part of what made that fight so memorable for me. Um, the environmental music as well, like the opposite of the boss music, the music that's trying to be in the background, I think it's just super interesting and immersive. Um, I think most good Metroidvanias do that really well, where you just like, Metroid almost invented that idea of just this quiet, subdued music in the background that um, is just kind of like both calm and building tension in between the, the, the spaces that you're traversing, um, keeping you on edge and kind of relaxing you. I don't know, Hollow Knight is just great at that. Not that I got to Deep Nest, but... Um, it does not depend. <laughs> no, I, I figured. All right, so uh, our closing thoughts. I thought this was a really interesting prompt from Christian. How freaking Team Cherry was three people. Um, Tiger Knight, Tiger Dev, Tiger Knight, <laughs> Tiger Dev, uh, between like 20 and 30 people active. How theoretically would like you, as uh, you're, you're pitching Hollow Knight as your game next semester, like how would you even begin approaching something like this and how, how would someone of, because Team Cherry was not, they were competing in the same game jams we are, you know, they were not that much further in their game development career when they started Hollow Knight. How would you approach um, designing this exact game if you, you were to? I think that 
like because I'm going to do it, I don't want to be on some dates that I want to make. And I'm like, I think that you guys really develop the world first. Like, I have a lot of ideas for how you want to do it. Like, all the people are going to have all the designs that they do for here, that they would incorporate later. Because they probably did a lot of sketches and a lot of work on world building, character design, stuff like that, and having a really good idea of the environment that they were going to play in maybe something that seems a cool world to explore and live and that will lead to it. That's gotta be the first starting point for me. I like the most white enough thing is just the college club that there's the moment in. Even with all of us, even if all three of us work for the semester, the problem is with the coordinating group of people to work in a certain like system art style or in a particular level of development for the losing but uh, I read stories of how during development, I felt really tough for them, like financially, how they had to put so much work in and so grab five, whatever they could, even if it was like they could serve me up. I remember I, I watched a, a video where they were talking about how they handled development of it. And one of the things they were talking about was the, the reason they were doing it doesn't really apply to Tiger Dev, but I think the benefit remains the same. They were talking about how because they were strapped for cash, the, they had to develop the game such that they could stop development and ship the game at any point and it would be a game. Um, so they would like, instead of like working on, they didn't like work on Hollow Knight as a whole all at once. They would make like one chunk and make that good and then move to the next chunk and make that good and move to the next chunk. So like every iteration is just adding content, not really developing the game. Like the core game was developed at the very beginning and everything after that was just adding more stuff onto it. And I think that like you were talking about how there, there's, it feels like there's just so much content in Hollow Knight. Um, and yet it like, wasn't like it wasn't developed by that many people and it wasn't in development for all that long. Um, so I think that one of the issues that I pretty much, no, I'm not even gonna say pretty much, every Tiger Dev project um, runs into the problem of hitting the end of the semester and not accomplishing what they had originally set out to do. So I think adopting the approach of just picking a, a tiny, core idea and doing it and then adding on to it slowly and slowly so you always have a playable thing yeah and you like eventually might reach your goal but even if you don't you're not like looking like okay we have like a half finished thing here and this is like quarter finished and it doesn't really mesh well together but they kind of have to be for the game to work so we're going to try and get them together um i think just hammering out the, the basic core stuff and expanding around it is useful. Elwood mentioned like designing one element and he said combat, which makes sense for a game like Hollow Knight. Mm -hmm. If the combat was bad, people would not enjoy Hollow Knight. I think you could take something like the Pantheons where you're just fighting bosses and you could ship that and there would be mm -hmm. an audience that would like absolutely eat that up, even if there was no other game. Um, I know, like, they, I, I assume they were probably developing combat as they went, but I imagine by the time, like, the second area was finished, the movement and the combat was probably already finalized, and they were just mm -hmm. changing numbers at that point. Um, I think that kind of, like, chunk-based development makes a lot of sense when you're not sure when you're going to run out of, uh, you know, run out of road or run mm -hmm. out of rails, and you just have to ship, or, like, Steam just runs out of your project, and you need to get something out the door, because you can't make your game forever. Talk about how you like use some of your data built-in, like piece by piece, to make a stop sign. But looking at the map, also that kind of makes a little bit of sense because you can see some of them. Like I know that the did it was one second amount of like a big balloon, and then that's on top of the city, and that's why it's got like water dripping down onto it. But that's like one of the only instances that I can think of where like the parts of the map really just freeze because they're kind of connected, at least on the developer side. A lot of it was something could have just been like, oh, this would be kind of cool. Tap this here. And I just kind of kept working on it. But it all does go really well still. 
I think it probably also makes play testing a lot easier. You can play test segments and areas of your game. You don't have to tell someone, sit down for 30 hours, tell me what you think about Hollow Knight. You can just have them practice a segment. Um, and I think that really helps them hone in the balance. Um, that was like the entire last few months of their dev cycle was pretty much just that. It was just honing in the balance and trying to finish another area or two. Um, that would be a really good position to be in, I can't imagine. So uh, I think our last thing before we'll open it up, because I know it's getting late, um, aside from the bosses, does anyone have any just like super memorable moments, something cool that you did in the game that you want to like flex about, or it's just a part that really stuck out to you? We all hated Hollow Knight? Okay. <laughs> this wasn't me, but my younger brother, who's like 14, he also looked up the game and did it on his own. And I sort of like watched and observed like from someone who already played how he experienced it with foresight. And for whatever reason, he never figured out that after he did the fireballs, which like you can see that beetle which green have, he still can French spring at it. So he just collected all the geo and bought that plant. That's like a really expensive part of the game. He got the dream mail like before he even made it to that area. And he was able to like get secret dialogue out of NPCs that went into it because he wanted to go back to the early game areas and have them in the dream. Really, really interesting. Uh, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, that, the that's one. Yeah, we don't really have time to get into it because already seven. But I, I think the the way that you can, and I don't think any two players are going to have the exact same experience with Hollow Knight, because you can do things in just so many different orders. Yeah, I mean, I think the chunk-based development kind of ties yeah. back into that. Um, how do you say that, Quirrell? Quirrell. 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 Oh, cool. Elwood, Elwood said, sitting down with Quirrell, you sit with him by the blue lake, screenshotted it, and it was his PC background for around three years. Yeah. I mean, so many areas, I feel like you could take any area of Hollow Knight and you could make a wallpaper out of it because they're just all that gorgeous. Yeah, and I, especially with that one, there's like the way they manage to generate emotional attachment to bug drawings that say like maybe 10 sentences total in the entire game is insane. But like that, like that thing at the end where you sit down with Quirrell, like I remember like, I, I sat on that screen for literally like five minutes because like I felt an attachment to the bug on the screen. And then afterwards I was like, why the fuck? The Quirrell has said like 10 things to me this entire game. Why yeah. am I sitting here? Little but bug just, drawings. They yeah. make you feel some kind or of like, Or like Elder Bug. Everybody loves Elder Bug. Elder Bug does nothing. It makes no sense. Yeah, man. Hollow Knight's a beautiful game. I should really finish it. <laughs> um so that is pretty much it i will see you all for silk song um there's two videos maybe. i wanted to plug yeah maybe i'm gonna post them in the um tiger Dove general chat i encourage if you guys have anything else about hollow knight favorite songs um a speed run whatever it, maybe game dev things too um post those in the chat but the boski's video is amazing um he has really good analysis on metroid and zelda games and he also did one on hollow knight because of course um, and then there's also a documentary um, I watched that a fan put together on uh, just kind of like a quick overview of how they made it and how they were able to generate so much content so quickly. And the thing you said, like they had to take out a loan to uh, finish the game, you know, covering some information like that. So I'll post those in the general chat. And if you guys have anything else to say about Hollow Knight, you can do that too. We're going to officially end the meeting here. If you guys still want to talk about Hollow Knight, I mean, we can hang out. Um, but uh, I think... We're going to put it to a close. So thanks for coming out. Um, I hope to see you guys next Monday. I'm really glad everyone could make it. Not next Monday. I, not next Monday. <laughs> Monday when we have, when we're here. Yes. All right. See ya. Oh. And we got the first.